goes on in Huddersfield. Tonight, we begin First Tuesday with a film about style, fashion and taste of a rather esoteric kind. You may not have been a fan, but you'll surely remember the Sex Pistols, who outraged respectable Britain in the late 70s, not only by their behaviour, but also with that anti-music which was christened punk rock. In 1977, to the relief of some people, the Sex Pistols disappeared off to America and rapid oblivion. But before they went, they played a farewell gig in Yorkshire. And as we discover in Made in Huddersfield, the town has become a shrine for the members of what now seems a curiously old-fashioned cult, punk rock. quite a long time and you know it's strange to just say punk because it's not you can't really pinpoint what it is you know it's just more of a way of life and uh, beliefs that, that you hold you know not just dressed as well when i was at school that is i just used to wear like old oh, badges and that i love my jacket and I used to wear padlock around my neck and they used to sit you know at school they used to be saying now they're gonna throw you out for wearing that but they never did and i just got Worse from then. <laughs> well, everybody else would call it worse. School itself would bar me. So bar me, teachers bar me. School itself would bar me, lessons bar me, because what good's learning French to me? I don't live in France, so why should I learn French? I mean, I've got 11 O-levels, so I'm lucky, really, that I don't have to take just any job. I can, you know, be lucky enough to get the job that I want to do. I work, I work with computers and uh, I like it. But they, you know, they tell me, get better jobs. Just just look at, you know, when jobs come up on the thing, just look at the money where it's, don't look about what it's about. Just look at the money, if it's more what you're on, go for it, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't agree with that at all. I mean, I've, I've got enough money now. I'm going, uh, going to Newcastle University. I want to go because I can just say to people, if they say something against me and say, oh, well, you're nothing. I've got, I've got my own stuff, what I've done, like volunteer work, you know, that, you know, and that means a lot to me. But also I've got some of, of their, their rubbish, you know, to say, well, yeah, but by your standards, going to university is good, so how can you, you say I'm nothing sort of thing? Too much time's taken up with school, because when you get to about 14, 13, you just want to be out drinking and taking drugs and stuff, and trying out all these new things like sex and drugs and all things you're finding out about that's life right that that's better than worrying about bloody all levels and jobs and stuff and that's what i did but i'm not thick right i've got plenty of intelligence but i never i never showed it at school and we were a bit a bit naive at that time and um Wearing swastikas were just a way of life, wasn't it? Pistols started it off, you know. They started it with swastikas just because it rebelled, didn't it? And people didn't like it. That's what we did it for anyway. Because it shocked people. And um, we got, you know, there's Nazis at school by blacks and that. I've known some good, like, blacks and packies and that. I used to get out with them at school and they were sound then. You know, so it just doesn't matter. It's just like if they start hassling us, yeah. that's when trouble starts. We're not against them. We're not against them. Stiffs give us more, more shit than, mm. than, than 
you know, blacks and packers. They give us more shit. You get your trendies, your nice white shirt and white trousers going out, showing his bird off to all his mates. Big macho man. They're the they're the ones to watch out for. Oh, they were going to be a doctor, and uh, in my eyes, they were, they were going to do everything, you know. I mean, I never thought you'd be a punk rocker. <laughs> that was the farthest thing from my mind. But you all have dreams for your children, everybody does. But they don't always work out that way. I played in the Yorkshire Cows for me with the ICI. Got a few wickets, a few runs. <laughs> Few medals. Yeah, few medals, yeah. I enjoyed it. I was hoping he might have been a cricketer, but he never left for a little bit. But uh, you can't push people into something they don't really want. If it uh, made it as a cricketer, I'd have gone and watched him and loved it. Will have been together three years. Uh... Well, Nobby, he lives with his girlfriend. He's just buying his house. He's working. He's not on a very good wage there. He does well for it, what money he gets. Kitty and Brookie work together, drummer and bassist. Kitty's this mad. Is that right in the middle lad? And Brookie's same. He's, he does a lot for the band. Rookie does a hell of a lot for band, money-wise and, and influence-wise. We're all committed, we're all good mates. It's the best way to be, you can't have a band on any other terms. she left home. I was very upset at the time. I didn't want her to go at all. But she's a very independent person and I knew that it would have to come earlier than usual. I just expected her to be different. I always knew she would be uh, different to most of her friends, really. Yeah, but you got, you sort of got to know my friends like some parents, they slag off the the kids' children. They don't even let them come through the front door. So oh. how do they know? You're like my mum. If she'd have ever said, oh, I don't like so-and-so, I wouldn't have held it against her because she got to know everybody. She let him in the house and that, and she did sit and talk to her like, like they were her mates sort of thing, you know. There's a lot of parents to slag off the kids' mates, and they only see them walking down the street. Well, how do they know them? Yeah. They, most people don't get to know the people, and they can't say out if they don't know them. Yeah, because we've always had children, in, even when you were young, haven't we, yeah. really? Other parents wouldn't let you in their house and no, that. No, when we lived at Birkby, they were always in our house, but you never got invited back, did you? <laughs> they wouldn't let anybody, they wouldn't let Camilla in the house, not because she was an awful child or anything, they just didn't want the people in. Probably to spoil the furniture, etc. But I was never bothered. He's 19 year old, and there's not a lot you can do about it, but I won't be like some people. A uh, lot of children's left home through it. But this is his home, and whenever he wants to stay here, he'll stay here. I don't believe in that. I mean, you're all individual, and you've all a mind of your own. And it's no good trying to force your ideas on other people. We don't approve, but it's what he wants to do. There's a big generation gap between, as you see. In fact, there's nearly two generation gaps in there. Well, I'd like him to, to stay, you know, to live at home, because I know where he is then. You know, no problem if he's in a flat, be frightened or you know, getting the right food, you know, because they won't get much money, like, you know, on, on the door, like, so I thought, mm -hmm. if he's at home, we can feed him and look after him and make sure he's, everything's okay. I don't want to leave home. It's just, it's just me home. I've got everything I need. I don't need to go out for, for anything. And everyone down left me money when I'm skinning that. And if I were living away from home, I'd be broke all the time and getting into trouble and that. So, I'd rather be at home. No, 
late 80s, right? Life's a bag of shit, right? So we just take life as it comes, right? Don't think about tomorrow. Just do what it is today, like. You might get your doll on a Friday, right? And you go and spend it all on hell, you know what I mean? And gigs. I work at a school with kids and then I work at somewhere else where my mum works with older people and, you know, across the age range is really, but I feel that old people, you know, they've no respect in that. I mean, they've worked, they've worked hard and the people who are old now are people who fought for this country. I mean, I don't agree with war or whatever, but I mean, they, they were used as like pawns and they, sh they should be sort of, sort of thanked for what they've done, you know, they're just thrown on scrap heap in this country. You know, in a lot of countries abroad, they try to, they looked up as if they're wise and that, and in this country they just looked as if they oh, the rubbish, you know, like treated like kids and come on, little grandma, or something like that, you know. Are you sharing them? It's a bit, it's a bit only that one. Oh, no, let's get out of it. What else can I ask? You always get some before you. She always gets some before you. She does, doesn't she? Never mind, I'm We've never seen either one like her before. Never. <laughs> never. What, not even in town? No, not no. even in town, love. Yeah. No. <laughs> Wait, who's to it now? Don't come off. I don't know why you cut die there. Don't you? You spoil it. I'll do yours. You will or not. <laughs> It looked nice with a nice green rinse. What's oh, with we, we like. Go with your dress. <laughs> this, <laughs> is, this is green. I know, but a nice green will go with your blue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something wrong with you. Is there? <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Pistols come on, they just went there. Straight insane, and they just took over. And everybody just went mad and mad on them in that. I think that's why they bombed because they were different, you know. That's why punk, that's why punk come from it, you know. Because they give us the incentive to be different, not to be right, stick to their regulations and the, the poxy music and the poxy music press and that. Last time Pistols played in England, were, I just feel like, <laughs> uh, they played at Ivanhoe's on Christmas Day 1977, I think it was Christmas Day or Christmas Day, one or two. Uh, and that was the last British gig they did before I went to America and then split up. So, so I just feel like a stamp on punk forever. I've never really liked calling no. myself a punk. It's the label what people have put on us. But admittedly, if we're talking about Assault and other people will say are as punks, you see, but really deep down I don't see it like that. We're different kinds of punks, <coughs> I suppose. We're not like the punks of, you know, yesterday. We're not degenerate, really. We don't go out and deliberately cause anarchy and things like that. We, I think most of the punks nowadays tend to just show their controversy in the way they dress how they speak, how they like to act about on the piazza, you know, sending people up and things like that, but they don't mean anybody any harm, really. It's just a big dos, really. I think Huddersfield's better than a lot more towns. There's, it's like, there's no places for gigs that don't like that, but it's still a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had some good venues, you know. You've got a lot of people coming from London and places like that, you know, really down south. There's nowhere left, is there? No, they, they won't take bands on, you know, now much here. So, I think, you know, they just don't want punks to be in, in the place. You, know. you should have seen it in 77, a lot better. <laughs> That's when it first started. It was really good, it was more violent. Hell of a lot of violence. We're now it's sort of really cut down hell of a lot. I think it's better this way with everybody's friends. I still think more or less the same, you know. You know what I mean? Like, I still sort of see these lights here and I still feel as um, 
so far of it, even now, you know. They call me granddad a lot of them, you know. <laughs> but that's something I don't like. <laughs> and, uh, no so much to it, but they don't like it. Mm, don't like us. No, nobody likes us. We're not loved. It's like <laughs> punks and skinheads are like in other towns that hate each other. It's like Huddersfield, punks and skinheads like each other and we go down together all the time, don't we? Yeah. And it's like, you know, like other towns go and they can't understand why punks and skinheads are going down together. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, I don't know why they're talking to them. Tossers. We've got we've got a bad reputation for stuff that we haven't done. And that, but as a group, we're we're all together, you know. We all stick together, punks and skins, you know. That's the way it should be now. We're all against the same thing, common enemy. So, why, why rebel against one another? Well, Huddersfield. It's just Huddersfield, isn't it? walking around and he asked a friend to ask if we do some modelling. It's just a way of life. It's not a, it's not a fashion. It's a cult figure, you know, like... It's, um... It's not not a fashion. Never one... Well, it was to begin with. You get, you know, all, all your poxy art students and that. Taking... You know, they were taking piss out of the self, really, weren't they? Mm. By being punks, cos we... They didn't know not about it. They just posing right but so now it's more street level it's more it's the kids that come from working class backgrounds and that but we don't class ourselves as any class as lot do we we're just punks if you say to me when you're gonna get a car you know when you're gonna change when we're gonna wear a tie at work things like that i'll never get anywhere if i don't wear a tie you know what i mean and to me it's ridiculous i mean i can do my job all right it don't matter what I'm wearing on my feet, where I'm, where I'm wearing a tie. I don't want him to look like this, obviously. I mean, uh, what mother in her right mind would. But um, I think, well, it, it, it's an outlet. It's something. They're letting off steam. They're rebelling against society. I mean, we want to have done it in a thousand years. But they don't bother today. They, they just go their own way and tell with the consequences. They're not bothered. I've tried all sorts. Eggs. Eggs, yeah, but they go off and it stinks, stinks <laughs> after. What swells used to you was lemon curd, didn't it? Mm. <laughs> lemon curd is sticky. Yeah. It's got 
another thing I've got to do. I've got to write a set list down for tonight. Oh, yeah. <sighs> 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 Sometimes I can't understand what they're singing about, you know. Uh, I think I get the opinion that it's uh, trying to make a point, aren't they? I don't know who to, uh, you know. They're always making a point about something. I think that's what the theme is, isn't it? <laughs> Sting guns in other films just about it's about every punk sound from there is they can change the name of the town or city they can sting guns in London Manchester whatever because we come from other fields it's sting guns in other fields it's just about uprising terminal and saying look we just don't want your bullshit anymore We're, we've got as life to leave we don't we don't want to follow on suit with what you've done you've made a balls of this world don't expect just to pay consequences Oh, well, it's always been a Manchester United fan right from being little. And the times they sat and cried when they've lost, but especially when they've been losing at the cup final. It's been sat on the settee with all his colours on his caps, scarves, all the outfit and everything. And then when they've lost, they just sat and cried, you know. They sent him off. The definite, that's a definite copper's reaction, isn't it? Send them off. Would you appreciate that mean SPG? Look at that, that's a bit bad, isn't it? We buy his clothes and his boots and everything and his food. 
and uh, he gives so much out of his board, but obviously gets most of it back, it's spent back on him. So I think he could manage, well he couldn't, it would be impossible, he couldn't manage on his, on his uh, door. Well done, Willie. You were right, Clem. I missed it. I said, if anyone's going to stay out the right side. Are you going to have the Yankee letter? I'm going to jump up in a fight now. To do the washing and cooking for him. And uh, I clean the house. Well, I have to do it for John, so I do it for him as well. I think it's part of being a mother. You get, you can be in town, you can hear people say, look at the state of that. Well, I think, well, what if they saw me with my son, you know? <laughs> now, well, there's so much good in the best of us, the worst of us, and so much good in... You know what is it? There's so much good in the best of us and so much bad in the worst of us. It hardly be over any of us to criticise the rest of us. And it's true. People think that sounds like something. They shouldn't, love. Yeah. And there's quite a few glass houses knocking about. Some people have melted right out about. But they're always the first to cast the first stone, aren't they? There's many worse things in life, and you think, well, he can't cover his arms up with a shirt and his neck, I suppose, and his hair will eventually grow. I hope he didn't like that when he's 40. The oldest punk he knows. I'm not changing for no one. Yeah, you're right. If, if I want to change, I'll change, but I'm not changing for no one else. I knew I was getting old, but I must say I felt some sympathy for that gentle-sounding dad when he said they're trying to make a point, aren't they? <laughs>